Well, hey, welcome, Pastor Jeff, another daily word. A key day here in the United States, I just learned President Trump was uh, sent to a military hospital in Washington, D.C., and clearly he has the symptoms of COVID-19, the virus, a pandemic, and it's referred to, look at your Bible, 2 Chronicles 7, 13. It's the third of three different ways in which the Lord calls us to return to him. The first is, he says to Solomon, 3,000 years ago, still applies to you and me today. Solomon was a human, as are we. He made a lot of mistakes. He got a lot right in the beginning. He got a lot of mistakes at the end. Uh, but here is what the three areas the Lord says, when, when I withhold the rain or send locusts or pestilence. Well, hello, that's what we have. We have both moral pestilence. You look up the definition of pestilence, includes also moral pestilence, such as the uh, gender confusion that we're giving our children today in the United States, or same-sex marriage, um, or no-fault divorce. Uh, all of this stuff is moral pestilence. But in addition, the Lord has allowed real um, serious physical pestilence in the form of this and who knows what's coming next, uh, COVID-19 virus. And uh, we pray for President Trump. In fact, let me just interrupt my thought and just say, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, yes. Pray, we pray right now in Jesus' name for a perfect healing for Donald J. Trump, spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally, in all ways, Lord, restore him, this man that uh, has known you in a certain way. We pray that even during this trial, you would reveal yourself to him more. He would come closer to you. Be that much better a leader, as good as he's been in certain ways. Clearly, the more he has your wisdom, the better he will be. So we just pray a blessing over this man of we pray a man of God coming out of that hospital, refreshed, renewed, restored, as only your Holy Spirit can do. We pray for his healing in every regard. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today I also want to include a outline of a repentance service that you can do in your church, you can do in your home. Hey, you can do it alone. You could do it with a devotion in your family. Do it with your neighbor. Do it with a Bible study. God willing, we're going to do this out in uh, the open at the Capitol in Sacramento, California on Sunday afternoon, October 11th, 2020. And it's pretty simple. You, of course, you can modify this, but it starts with a start with the Lord's Prayer. By the way, instead of something like, forgive us our trespasses, let's just be honest. It's forgive us our sins as we forgive the sins of others. Do we have sin? Yeah. Has, has the blood of Christ covered it? Yes. And, so it's a yes and, and he wants us to remove the old sin strongholds, generational curses, uh, vows that you made as a child that no longer are needed, but they're still stuck in your mind. They're a filter for God's perfect truth in his word. The Lord wants you and me to be holy as he's holy. He calls us already as his ambassador, royal ambassadors, if you will. And he's calling us to be a bride. He's the soon coming bridegroom. So you start with the Lord's Prayer, you may want to include a few scriptures. One of my favorite scriptures is Ephesians 5. This is from the New King James. Starting in verse 25, it says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might 
sanctify, there's a beautiful deep word, set apart, cleanse spiritually, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. Yes, you want to get rid of an old sin pattern, replace it with the word of God. And then this next verse 27, Ephesians 5, 27, so powerful. I hope this gives you encouragement that he, capital H, might present her to himself a glorious church. He's going to present us to himself. He's going to do the heavy lifting as always. He did the work on the cross. What you and I are called to do is so minimal compared to what he's already done. And now here he is again, cleansing us, putting us through a refiner's fire. Yeah, we're all being tested so that we will be pure, a glorious church. And he says, not having spot or wrinkle. Yeah, you get rid of your sin strongholds or any such thing, but that she should be holy. That's you and me, the bride of Christ, and without blemish. Wow. Wow. He's the soon coming bridegroom. We have to get ready. And you know that parable, Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13. Five of those virgins have oil. Five don't. It's the oil of the Holy Spirit. The more you get rid of the old junk, what I call the old smelly t-shirt, the 400-pound garbage bag you've been carrying in your back, the more you get rid of that, the more you ask for and will receive the wisdom of the Holy Spirit based on the Word of God. Replace a sin with the Word of God. The Word of God is mighty for pulling down a stronghold. We have these incredible weapons. Use them. Clean up. My wife says kind of jokingly, it's kind of like going to a big Walmart store. Clean up on aisle five. If you're the store manager, you get it over the intercom. There's a mess out here on aisle five. Yeah, it's your job. Take a broom take a waste uh, pan or whatever those are called, clean up, clean up on aisle five. It's time today. So back to the repentance service, Lord's Prayer, a couple of good scriptures, and then several key pieces here. If you have the time, yes, do a five or 10 minute sermon on repentance. One of my favorite focus points is on Luke 24, verse 47 where the Lord says that repentance as well as remission of sins, he uses the word repentance first, should be preached in his name in Jerusalem and then to all corners of the earth. This great commission uses repentance first. Wow. Have we dropped that out of the body of Christ? Oh, yeah. We don't typically teach on repentance. So, but then following a brief sermon, here's what I suggest. You look then at the seven abominations the Lord calls abominations in his Holy Spirit in Proverbs 6, starting in verse 15 or 16 through 19. Seven things are listed, of which the first is a proud look. The last one, as I recall, is one who creates division uh, with the brethren. And we can look at any one of those seven. In fact, I wrote a booklet called Take the Repentance Route. It covers in a seven-week session each one of those seven sins in a small group. It's real powerful. And uh, write me for a copy or go on the website at globalrepent.com. But basically, in your church service or your devotion with your family or by yourself, take at least one or two of those seven and invite the Holy Spirit to counsel you, to mentor you, and show you where that may have begun in your life years ago. And you then can confess that sin if you wish. And then the next step is to choose free will to repent actually give yourself a minute or more, five minutes, to actually repent. 
you know, we teach about it. We had these major events on the mall in Washington, D.C. a week or more ago. Oh, that's great. Wonderful speakers. I don't doubt that at all. It, it moved the needle, so to speak. The heavens open. Very good, wonderful thing. Now it's time to put this into practice. And it begins with you and me. So take time in this, we'll call, call it a repentance service, to handle at least one or more of those seven. And then two more steps to go. Take some time to do one or more of the major national sins. What are those? Well, killing of innocents, idolatry, the sanctification, in other words, the legalization of sexual perversions that are now culturally acceptable. That is a horrific national sin in virtually every nation now. And then the last one, a national sin of failing to follow God's word, especially with respect to Israel, his land. Now you can pick any one of those four. And again, take a couple of minutes in silence. You, you can speak for your nation in the same way that Nehemiah and Daniel confess their sins, the sins of their family and the sins of their nations. I believe we can still do that. And hey, the, how, what, what's the downside? I don't see a downside on it. So one more key step. After that, and some closing worship and prayer, you then can ask anyone in that group, in your congregation, your Bible study or whatever, anyone wanting to share any of that experience of repenting, either from a personal or a national sin. My experience is some one or more will want to share, others will be private, but when anyone does share, there's a wonderful fellowship that builds there's a wonderful conversation that goes on. There's a brand new feeling of vulnerability and love in the room. We take off our false fronts and we see each other as human, as um, vulnerable. It's a good place to be because we are also filled with the Holy Spirit. We're replacing the old stuff with the perfected Holy Spirit the eternal spirit, which we will enjoy after we're done with this brief lifetime. So there will be wonderful fellowship afterwards. I really encourage you to do a repentance service and repent. In Jesus' name, amen.